Hi, my name's Kevin and welcome to another video. Um, I'm going to build a small steam engine, uh, about roughly this sort of size, only a small engine. It's called the Jerry's Beam engine. Um, you may be familiar with it. There's um, a few videos on YouTube, you know, showing you the engines and that. But I thought I'd do a small series of uh, the build process for one of these little engines. Uh, part one, which is this is part one, I'm going to... Um, build uh, CNC the, the frame out, the main frame for it, which is out of 5mm aluminium. Um, just flat bar, flat stock aluminium, nothing special. And um, the rest of the engine is made from a mixture of steel, brass, um, phosphorus, bronze. I don't know whether I'll be able to get hold of any of that. Um, I may just use it for brass, because I mean, it's not going to have a huge lot of running, it's more of a building experience rather than you know just leaving it running for hours on end, days on end or whatever. So I'm just going to probably make all the parts out of brass and um, we'll see how we get on with that. So here's the, the frames. Um, these were cut out on a CNC router which I have um, in the shed. Um, so I've got a, a D, what they call a DXF file which is the whole file for all of the parts for the engine. Um, on the computer which I downloaded from the internet and um, split the frame out first and then um, I've set that up in the software to you know to cut it out for the CNC in that. So I'll show you that on the computer I'll show you the um, process of uh, how we got from the drawing which I downloaded to ending up with this. Uh, I've done some of the other parts which I'll, I'll sort of go into more detail in uh, later videos. Um, here's the beam which um, goes across you know and obviously rocks up and down for the piston and that. Uh, and then we've got the con rod here which I've started and um, we've got the eccentric and we've got some of the linkages in here as well and um, you may not be able to see those too well. But these are the linkages to, you, you'll see in the, in the, um, the drawing which I'll show you. So yeah, so I've done a mixture of parts. Um, I'm just trying to locate some brass at the moment, some machine grade brass. Uh, it's quite expensive, so I'm hoping I can lay my hands on some from a scrap yard or um, from a scrap metal dealer or somewhere like that. So, but anyway, we'll have a look at the screen and um, I'll show you through the software and how we set up to just cut the frame out on the CNC. Well, here's the file I downloaded from the net. This is a DXF file, so um, a commonly used file. So this file can be exported and imported to other software, which is going to be good because I want to import um, some bits from here into my software for the CNC router. So we'll just have a look at some of the parts on here. Um, so like here's the flywheel, for instance. This one was originally made from brass, but I'm just going to make it from steel because I haven't been able to get a piece of brass to this size. Um, and it would be you no, know, it wouldn't be cheap to buy a piece of brass because this is 75 mil across, so you know, reasonable size piece of brass. Um, we've got like the counterbalances here, which is on the main axle. Um, this is where the piston, the, you know, the com rod comes from. Um, and then we've got what else we got here? We've got like the main bearings for the beam, and we've got the piston, the cylinder head, and the main cylinder, um, and the base of this and cylinder. Um, this is the information just for the slide valve. This engine uses a slide valve, so it's pushed up and then pushed down, and um, the timing's all done by an eccentric. So um, then we've got obviously the shafts for the eccentric, which are down here. Um, you know, so the, yeah, so it's, it's quite a few parts involved to make. Some fiddly parts. Um, we've got like these what they call grounding links. So this is you know, going to link um, the beam to the various other parts and that. And these are quite fiddly, you know, 1.5 mil across. Um, I have made some of these parts and um, I've just roughly made them at the moment and then I'll finish them off as I need them. And then we've got the various like axles and, you know, mounts and for sort of things. So, but we'll have a look. Um, I've got the frame already in the software for the CNC router. So here we are, this is just one side of that frame. And um, we'll have a look at how we're going to machine this. So to begin with, we're going to cut these internal parts out first. So we'll just select all those parts. And I'll show you the setup process for that. 
So we're just going to do what they call a 2D profiling cut. So first of all, we need to tell the cutter to come inside this line. We don't want to cut on the line or outside. So we've just told it inside up here. Then we need to know a thickness. So the aluminium is 5 mil thick. And um, I'm going to go a bit more than that. As you can see here, I'm going to go at 5.5. Um, this just makes sure that the cutter goes through all the way through the material. Um, obviously, when cutting, I'm going to do this in three pass, three or four passes. You know, not not all in one go because it would just be too much load on the cutter and the cutter would flex. You know, and I'd have all sorts of issues. So what I'm going to do is make three different passes that each go in deeper and deeper, and then um, I'm also going to come inside this line. By and leave about a quarter of a mil extra. So what I'll do then is go back and then I'll do a finishing cut and that won't put so much load on the cutter. So here we've got that here, we've told it under allowance, we've told it an offset of 0 0.25 millimeters. And then we come down, we don't need to touch some of these um, selections, but we do need to then tell it what machine tool we want to use. So we're going to use a end mill. Um, a 5 mil end mill single flute, um, especially made for aluminium. And then we come down a bit further. And then we've got climb mill or conventional mill. Um, I'm going to use climb mill because the the finish that will give a lot better finish um, when we do the final cut. And then we just come down all the way. Um, we just need it to you know to tell it what material thickness it is which is 5.5 millimeters um, so this again this tells it to go all the way through and stick out the bottom by five uh, by half a mil right and then that's it so we've now selected that and we'll just go now and it's drawn those tool paths so we'll just zoom in so here are those tool paths ready to go <coughs> excuse me ready to go and then we'll um, have a look at drawing on the outside to do the cut for the outside right so now we need to cut the part out so we'll just select the outside of the cut which we or the part which we need to cut out and we'll come across again same principle again just the only difference being this time we're going to cut outside the line not inside so I'll just run through the cut and set up and same again, 5 mil end mil, and that produces our cut line. So we, this is going to be obviously cutting the part out. So what we need to do, we need to hold it in place until it's finished cutting. Otherwise, the part is either going to fly out of the machine, or it may break the cutter, or you know anything like that. So we'll select the cut line, and we can actually put in tabs, what they call tabs. And I'll explain, I'll just set up for those and then I'll explain what they actually do. Right, so here's our tab here. So what that does is as the cutter's coming round, that will come to this point here, it will come off the workpiece or lift off the workpiece, travel two mil and then plunge back into the workpiece. So what happens is as this finished, I'll just add in the rest of them. As the cutter's finished during its cut and pass, um, the part is still going to be connected to the waste material by these tabs. So that keeps it nice and safe. You know, the cutter is not going to bust or do any damage or anything like that. And then when it's finished, all we need to do is just cut those out with a hacksaw and then finish them up with a file. Um, this green and black box here, this is where the cutter starts its cut. So we'll have that on the bottom so it's out of the way. It won't be seen just in case it leaves a poor edge as it's plunging into the material. So that's all we need to do now on that. And then we need to obviously export that out for the CNC, uh, which I, I won't show you all that. I'll, um, I'll do that off screen. And then I'll show you a video of that actually on the CNC router being cut out.
So that's it for the frames. And this is looking at the plate from the back of the completed item. Uh, just to show the tabs, so what I'll do now is I'll cut through the tabs with a hacksaw and then file them smooth. Uh, it's just a few fixing holes now left to um, drill, but I'll do those at a later date. So that's the end of part one, and I'll now start working on part two, and we'll upload that shortly. Thanks for watching.